Hi everybody, Jonah Dempsey here. I'm in Santa Fe by the Santa Fe River Trail. And I wanna to talk today about the objective personality notion of sleep being the inner world. So if you've been studying objective personality or learning the animals, you learn a number of things about the sleep play dichotomy. You might learn, for instance, that sleep is conserving energy, play is spending energy, that sleep is processed, resolved, already kind of come to a conclusion previously, uh, perhaps, although conclusions also have to do with blast. But, you know, because sleep has OI as one of its components, there's a sort of concluded aspect of it. And you might learn play, on the other hand, is thinking aloud, learning as they go, realizing things, processing. And I've talked before about some of the nuances here. For instance, I'm a play person. Um, I process a lot. And it's almost like for me to look at sleep people, and then the, the keyword or the keynote is processed. I'm a little surprised by that because I'm almost like, did you guys really process? And they're like, oh yeah, but they just did it internally. Like as an example, I was doing a kind of live typing with a sleep person. And I said, um, I explained it to you and I said, so which do you think you are? And she goes, sleep. And I say, okay, how do you know? And she goes, wait, pause, pause, wait, eight seconds go by. I just do. And it's like, she wouldn't process out loud. She wouldn't show her rationale. She wouldn't explain, you know, why she thought she was asleep. She's just kind of like completely internal and then like, oh, I, I'm asleep, yeah. So, I mean, so the funny thing is, I, I've talked about this before, as a play person, it can actually look like sleep is not processing at all uh, because you don't hear them process. You don't see them process. It's processed. In a way, I would say that they are, because our saviors are always addictions, they are addicted to rushing to the place where the loop is closed, rushing to where it is, quote unquote, processed, rushing to, you know, getting to the point where they've already processed it, which to me is like, wow, like the amount of processing you've done is so little, but okay. So these are some of the nuances, kind of tricky aspects of sleep. Well, what I want to talk to you about today is this notion that sleep is the inner world. It does make sense. It's introverted, right? So is introverted the inner world? Kinda, kinda. It depends what we mean by inner, right? Is if we think going into your inner world is not being present to the outer world, then actually I would say that when I'm in my play right now, I'm not present to the outer world. But that's specific to my type because my play has intuition. I actually think if we're talking about being present to the sensory world, present to the wind blowing through the grass, present to the birds chirping and the sound of the river, present to the way the sun dapples the ground with its light, all of this stuff is sensing. And that's all very much outer world. Even the sensing that you would call the OI sensing, at least in tr traditional connotations, is like noticing your physical body, noticing your hunger level, noticing if you're tired, noticing your facial expression, noticing tension you're holding in your shoulders, all that. Even that's the outer world. Even the inner world of sensing is still somehow outer because it's based on external sensations. So it, I think it really depends what we mean by inner or outer. Because if we're talking about intuition, then, you know, intuition is the imagination. Intuition is kind of the inner world that is non-sensorial. So I guess I'm pointing this out because Dave and Shan will talk about sleep as the inner world. Well, for them, it is the inner world because they have NIFI. So it, particularly because they have NI, right? I don't think it makes a difference if it paired with FI or TI, but the fact that they have NI is meaning that when they go into sleep, they're going into their imagination. I have SI FI, that's my sleep. When I go into sleep, I actually go out into the world and I'm extremely present in the world. And this is part of the reason it took me so long to figure out that I'm missing sleep. What I'm missing 
is actually my way of being fully present to the outer world. That's very hard for me to do. Going deeply into my presence, being present with the outer world, is something that I'm not great at. You know, here I'm doing play. I'm thinking aloud, I'm processing out loud. I'm kind of learning as I go. This is obviously a play monologue, and it's very, very hard for me to be present. I could like accidentally walk into traffic. That's why I do this at the river trail where there is no traffic, right? But I can't do both at the same time. I can't go on this walk and play and also be present and notice things. So when I want to practice sleep, I leave my phone at home. That way I'm not consuming anything. I also, by the way, try to stop playing out scenarios in my head. I've met other people who have my same type or more or less my same type. There's someone who's like one coin off from me. She's the FF version of me. I'm the MF version. And uh, basically, she said that she doesn't drive anywhere. She loves to walk everywhere. Well, this is true of me, too. Especially when I lived in big cities, I didn't have to drive. But even now, I have actually somehow ended up with three cars. No idea how that happened. I have multiple cars at my place, two of which are in my name, and one that I'm driving until someone picks it up. And basically, you know, even with, the, even with like the ability to drive around easily and actually enjoy driving, like I have a BMW, it's really nice to drive, that one at least, um, I still don't do it. Why not? Because I'm off in my head. I don't want to have to context switch and go into being present. And the thing is, if I drive, I can do it. I can't be playing out scenarios in my head while I'm driving. It makes me a bad driver, right? I can't be imagining conversations. I can't be playing out my plans for the future. I can't be thinking about different scenarios and how they're going to work. Let's give a quick example. HDHD conference is coming up. Every year, I put on the High Desert Human Design Conference. It's so much fun. And it's very creative. Particularly, the scheduling is very creative because I have to think about when to place all the events. Last year, we had around 60 events. This year, we're up to 68. It's probably going to hit 75. These are 75, 60 to 70, 75 individual different events. Like, that's a lot over five days, but now we've expanded, so we have pre- and post-conference. And we have a post-conference retreat. So it ends up being around 15 days total. Five days of the main event, pre-conference, and post-conference. Okay, well, I have to do a lot of play, right? I do a lot of play in the sense that, and I'm doing intuitive play, not sensing play, right? I'm doing intuitive play because what I'm doing is imagining the different ways it could play out. And I'm like, okay, we all want to see this band, because we also have bands, not just talks. Right before the band plays, I had a speaker who wanted to do a breathwork practice. I'm like, that's not going to work, because the breathwork is going to get everybody all hypnotized and chilled out. And that's actually Saturday afternoon, kind of peak of the conference. We need to move the breathwork somewhere else, and we need to get like a hype person before the band plays to get everyone hyped up. It's not just, an, actually, it's, just, it's actually just one person, but he, before he plays, and we're all really excited, and last year, he was one of the highlights. It actually might be a band this time. There might be some people sitting in, so we'll see. But anyway, um, my point is, I'm doing so much play that, like, if I go for a walk in the morning on my way to the cafe, I walk here, River Trail. Whole time I'm playing whole time. Play, play, play. Like, you could like be like, hey, Jonah, and I wouldn't even notice you because I'm so off in my head. I'm so deep in my inner world. And what am I doing? I am trying all different approaches to get a comprehensive view of a situation. I'm a consume, play, intuitive dude. Consume is very comprehensive, you know, seeing things from all different angles. Play is very much active, burning a lot of energy, spending a lot of energy, 
moving forward with different scenarios. So I'm gonna walk for an hour the whole time I'm playing in my head. And then, say I work all day at a cafe and I come back. Well, after I'm exhausted, you know, if I stay addicted to my saviors, then I'm just gonna like consume and play the whole way home too. You know, I'm gonna give people consume reports. Yeah, so here's what I found today. Here's what I gathered today. I'm gonna record videos like this. You know, that's also very consume report. Here's everything I've consumed. I'm gonna play. Here's a bunch of stuff thinking aloud and learning as I go. But what I've been doing, say I actually spent all my consume play, and now I wanna practice my blast sleep. Those are my demons. Then if I'm practicing my blast, I might try to narrow down, what if I learned? You know, what's a lesson here? But if I really wanna practice my sleep, skip blast, maybe I already did some blast, right? Maybe I already finished some things, closed some loops. So then what I do, I wanna practice sleep, turn off my brain completely, go fully into the external world. Notice how many shades of green I can see. Not even thinking about it, actually. It's even better if I just have no thought, literally no thought. Fully meditative state, fully experiencing my facial expression change, my posture change, my shoulders relax. It's like going into trance, literally. That is how I experience my sleep. And it's really rejuvenating. The thing is, I can't always do it. Say I'm really mad about something, can't get into my sleep. So then I have a little anger journal app and I'll write in my anger journal what made me mad, you know, what I tried, things like that. And then that helps me to let go of that anger so I can relax. But some days it's impossible. Some days it's like, I literally cannot make it into sleep. I can't let go of all the processing. I'm so stuck on the processing that, you know, I'm just like walking around processing. And uh, yeah, and so I guess this is just to say, you know, when we learn that sleep is the inner world, I think that applies to intuitive sleep. If you have NIFI or NITI, I think that very much applies. If you have sensing sleep, it's very different. Your inner world is intuitive in some sense. Um, the intuition, so it's gonna be your play, your consume, right? Those are the ones that have extroverted intuition. So I guess the last thing I'll say is just, when we think about what are the I functions, DI is self, DE is other. So what's OI, OE? OI is not self, OE isn't other. OI is like the past, and OE is the future in some sense. OI is certainty, OE is variety. OI is kind of resting because it's put to rest, concluded. OE is spending energy because it's not yet concluded, not letting it rest. So who's more likely to hold a grudge? Well, I think they just mean different things, right? An OE person is more likely to be ruminating, fuming, going, I can't believe they did that, or, you know, whatever it is. The OI person is more likely to have just resolved it and accepted it and been like, well, that didn't work. That's the past. So it's like OI is rushing to turn the present into the past. OE is fighting the past, or fighting, sorry, not fighting the past, fighting the past-ifying aspects in the sense that like there's some mechanism by which things become the past OE is fighting to keep them from becoming the past keep hope alive keep things going and it takes a lot of energy it's actually like I've had this thought that like OI is like you're drowning and then you realize that it like quenches a deep thirst and that's actually a line from a, a Dennis Johnson short story but you know the drowning man who feels his thirst quenched. That's what it's like. For me, OE, I'm like, I'm drowning, 
don't let this become the past, fight it. But then there's a moment of surrender where it's like, oh, it's actually very relaxing and easy to just let it become resolved. Okay, that's it for me. Thanks for watching.